I'm Scott Hervey with Weintraub Tobin. And I'm Josh Escovito with Weintraub Tobin. Over the course of a few days, Chipotle and Sweet Green engaged in a trademark skirmish concerning the Chipotle mark and settled the matter just a few days later. That's what we'll be discussing on this installment of The Briefing by the IP Law Blog. Today, we're going to discuss a recent legal dispute between two fast casual restaurant chains, Chipotle and Sweet Green. In short, Chipotle filed a lawsuit in California federal court against Sweet Green, accusing the rival chain of infringing its trademark by selling a Chipotle chicken burrito bowl that Chipotle claims is directly competing with Chipotle's own menu item. That's a bold, smoky, and spicy move by Chipotle. <laughs> what exactly were their claims, Josh? Although I think I know. Chipotle alleges that Sweet Green has been infringing its well-known Chipotle trademark since March 30 by selling a menu item with very similar ingredients to Chipotle's own popular burrito bowl and incorporating the Chipotle mark into the name of the item. By now, you may be wondering, how exactly is Sweet Green infringing Chipotle's trademark? Well, if I didn't already give it away, let me tell you. According to the complaint, Sweet Green's menu item is listed with a capitalized Chipotle, or sometimes in all caps on its website and in its social media posts on Instagram or Twitter. In addition, some ads for the allegedly infringing item utilize a font or background color, which Chipotle claims is eerily similar to Chipotle's font and background color. So basically, Chipotle is claiming that Sweet Greens is trying to create confusion among customers by falsely creating an impression that its product is somehow sponsored or authorized by Chipotle. At the very least, Chipotle is claiming that Sweet Green has inadvertently created a situation that is likely to create consumer confusion. That's right. Chipotle says that Sweet Green's actions are likely to cause confusion among consumers and that Sweet Green is wrongfully profiting from trading off of Chipotle's valuable goodwill and reputation. At least those are the claims. I see. So what was Chipotle seeking through this lawsuit, Scott? Well, Chipotle alleged three Lanham Act violations, along with a claim under California unfair competition law and sought injunctive relief and treble damages, according to the complaint. Those are some serious allegations. But there's been a recent development in this case, hasn't there? Yes. Just a few days after Chipotle filed the lawsuit, Sweet Green agreed to change the name of its new Chipotle Chicken Burrito Bowl to Chicken Plus Chipotle Pepper Bowl as part of a tentative agreement between the two companies to resolve the suit. That's interesting. And I think this really underscores the perils of adopting a mark in the restaurant industry that is also a popular ingredient. Here, it seems to have worked out for Chipotle through a quick resolution. I do question, however, how this would have played out if it had been litigated. I'm not confident that Chipotle would have walked away victorious. What do both parties have to say about the resolution, Scott? According to the statements provided to multiple news outlets, Sweet Green says it made the changes to focus on business and continue serving our guests without distraction. That's a legitimate interest. And Chipotle says that it is pleased that Sweet Green has chosen to amend their materials in a manner that protects our trademarks and intellectual property. So it seems like both companies are satisfied with this resolution. At least to some extent. Now both parties can move forward with their business without the distraction and expense of litigation. I'm also willing to bet that Sweet Green isn't going to sell fewer bowls as a result of the name change. Absolutely. And litigating this issue would have been a pure matter of principle with little to gain at the end. Okay. But Josh, what do you think about the merits of Chipotle's claim? I mean, I think they might have had fair grounds to be upset. It does to me seem that Sweet Green may have overemphasized Chipotle. I mean, I know it's a exciting food product and everybody likes a smoky hot pepper, but they seem to emphasize it a little too much. What do you think? I think that's certainly the argument that Chipotle would have made. You know, they would have argued that the emphasis was clearly intended to uh, palm off of the goodwill that Chipotle had has built in its brand over the years. On the other hand, I think Sweet Green could have replied and said, our emphasis was on the fact that this is a Chipotle bowl. 
it is to be distinguished from you know some of our other items and to let our consumers know that this is the primary ingredient in this particular item now i i think there's there are colorable arguments uh cutting both ways you know i think we laugh a little bit at the at the claim by chipotle but it's not entirely without merit i i see the point i still don't know if they prevail at the end of the day but it's certainly not frivolous and josh i think this also underscores the problem with choosing an arbitrary actually i don't even know if chipotle is arbitrary in in in, in the context of mexican food I mean, it could be suggestive and possibly even descriptive. Um, and that's the problem, right? That's the problem with uh, with picking as your primary brand a word that has actual meaning. And especially if you're selling food products into which chipotle peppers are used, uh, you're going to have to really spend some money in policing that trademark and preventing others from from essentially diluting uh diluting its meaning towards your company or towards the chipotle uh, corporation uh by having third parties use it to describe an ingredient in their food products so i think chipotle as a mark owner kind of has to do this and will have to do this again if they feel that some restaurant, whether it be fast casual or fast food or otherwise, is overemphasizing the word Chipotle to identify a particular food product. I think that's a fair point, Scott. And I think that's why you see other restaurants who also adopt marks that are somehow relevant in their particular uh, type of food or even outside of the restaurant industry. And in another industry, they adopt a mark that is particularly relevant to that business. Uh, I think you tend to see some of those larger companies uh, get very aggressive in protecting their trademark rights. Yeah, well, they have to. Otherwise, they can they can risk their scope uh, and sphere of ownership kind of eroding. So Josh, thanks for sharing. This is a really interesting topic. Thanks, Scott. Well, that wraps it up for this installment of The Briefing by the IP Law Blog. I'm Scott Hervey. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave us a five-star rating. We certainly would appreciate it. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our podcast, wherever you get your favorite podcast from. And if you're interested in more content like this, please visit us at theiplawblog.com.